Welcome to the Saber RD online training course. This series of fast-paced videos will quickly teach you the full power of the Saber RD simulation environment. In this section, we look at the schematic capture and parts library. Creating a schematic is normally the first step when using Saber RD. Its primary function is to diagram which models are to be simulated, how they are connected, and what the property values are for each of these models. We'll illustrate the key concepts of the Saber RD schematic capture by constructing a simple voltage divider circuit. Beginning with the Start Page window, New Design is selected. The directory for the files is set by browsing and the design name Divider is chosen. A blank canvas is created. The Libraries and Properties windows need to be visible. This is done by navigating to the View tab and the Tools pull-down. All circuits in Saber RD must have a ground. Navigating to the Domain References Library, the symbol, simply called Ground, is selected. Holding down the left-hand mouse button and dragging places the symbol onto the canvas. The next symbol to place is a resistor. This time, the search utility is used to locate the symbol. A basic configuration for a resistor is selected. The line to the right of the name indicates its orientation on the schematic. The one with the vertical orientation is selected and placed above the ground symbol. One end of the resistor is connected to ground by first clicking on the square box and immediately releasing. Moving the cursor rubber bands a wire. When the wire is correctly over the ground symbol connection, it highlights. Clicking and releasing again makes the square disappear, indicating a successful connection. The schematic is now comprised of three elements, the ground, a resistor, and the wire between them. As the cursor rolls over each element, the element turns red, indicating it is targeted to be selected. Clicking on an element selects it, and its color turns green. Selecting the resistor enables more precise placement directly over the ground symbol. Hovering over an element and pressing the right-hand mouse button brings up a local menu, enabling other actions such as rotating and flipping. Selecting an element also displays its properties in the Properties window. There are three properties which are of particular interest for the resistor. The first is the primitive property. It associates the symbol with the simulation model labeled R. The nominal resistance property is the resistor's value. It is set to 1K ohms. The ref property labels the instance. For this schematic, it will be changed to R2, and its visibility is changed so the value is displayed on the schematic. Clicking on the individual labels enables them to be moved to improve the aesthetics of the schematic. A second resistor is added, but this time the horizontally oriented version is used. Again, the nominal resistance is set to 1K ohms, and the instance is changed to R1. A wire is added between the resistors. It's selected, its name is changed to OUT, and the visibility is changed so it appears on the schematic. For stimulus, a constant voltage source will be applied. It's found by navigating to the sources library and opening the electrical category. It's given a value of 10 volts. A wire is added between the stimulus and the resistor. It is labeled in and displayed. Instead of looking up another ground symbol, the existing one is replicated by selecting it, typing the Ctrl-C shortcut to copy it, and pasting it with the Ctrl-V shortcut. The schematic can be better fit onto the canvas by selecting the local menu with the right-hand mouse button and navigating to the Zoom submenu. Among the various Zoom options, selecting Zoom to Fit fills the canvas with the schematic. Panning across the schematic is achieved by using the middle mouse button. The final step is to check the validity of the schematic by running a DC analysis. The successful analysis shows the expected output voltage of 5 volts. If there was a problem with the schematic, it would likely show up as an error message in one of the transcript windows below. Though most circuits simulated with Saber RD will be larger than this one and consist of a wider variety of models, they can all be constructed using this basic process. Nodes that route to multiple places can be simplified with schematic connectors. Their most common usage is to connect DC bias voltage sources. A generic same page connector can also be used to connect distant nodes. Be sure to specify the same name for each connector. The hierarchical capabilities of Saber RD can be used to better organize schematics and facilitate reuse. We'll step through this process by applying it to the voltage divider that was just created. First, the voltage source and ground symbols are deleted. A hierarchical analog connector is added to each node and correspondingly named. The nominal values for the resistors are changed to variables. The schematic is saved. The local menu is accessed to automatically create a hierarchical symbol. 
The reference node is moved to the bottom and the symbol is saved. Two new parameters are added to the symbol, corresponding to the variables that were added to the two resistors in the schematic. This will enable parameter access from the top level, making it easy to change values when using multiple instances of the divider subcircuit. A new top-level circuit is created to test the divider subcircuit. The divider symbol is accessed by using the local menu and choosing Get Part by Symbol Name. Browsing to the local directory finds the symbol, and it is placed on the canvas. Note that the schematic is referenced by the symbol with the use of a parameter. Multiple instances of the divider can be easily cascaded, with each having unique resistance values. The schematic is validated by executing a DC analysis. Now that we know how to construct schematics, let's look at the thousands of parts included with SaberRD, accessible through the Libraries window. The Parts tab lists the models in a hierarchical form. Radio buttons select between generic parts and components. Components are models of specific parts available from a component manufacturer. Like a real part from a manufacturer, they are typically listed by part number. An example of a component model is an LM741 op amp. The parameters of components are preset to match the datasheet and few, if any, can be adjusted. Generic parts, on the other hand, are models that can be customized through a variety of parameters. An example of a generic part is the Level 1 op amp model. Parameters such as gain, unity gain bandwidth, and slew rate can be custom set. Having direct access to these parameters will prove to be important when performing analyses associated with robust design, such as sensitivity, Monte Carlo, and fault analyses. Each folder icon with a small blue tag corresponds to a SaberRD library. Under these folders, there may be subfolders that further categorize the parts. Going down the tree, individual models are displayed, represented by a generic icon. Blue icons represent models that are written in the MAST modeling language. Red icons represent models written in VHDL. Yellow icons represent schematic subcircuits, ground symbols, and schematic connectors. To learn more about a particular model, bring up the local menu with the right-hand mouse button and select Help. Trade-offs between precision and simulation time are important decisions when simulating your design. One of the most significant aspects of SaberRD is the ability to choose different levels of abstraction for any part of your design. You control this level of abstraction simply by the models you choose. Models operate in different domains. The most common type of domain is electrical. It follows Ohm's law, where voltage is the across variable and current is the through variable, and Kirchhoff's current law, where the sum of the currents into a node equals zero. There are other domains that follow these same laws except using different across and through variables. SaberRD has models that operate in the following domains. Mechanical rotational, mechanical translational, thermal, magnetic, hydraulic, and pneumatic. They can be found in the corresponding library folders. Pin connections must be made within the same domain. Conversion between domains is done within a model. As an example, a motor has electrical input pins and mechanical rotational output pins. Signals need not always be one of these domains. A higher level abstraction using control system blocks can be applied. Interface models make it easy to convert from a control system flow to different domains. SaberRD can concurrently simulate both analog and digital. The digital library consists of primitive gates and other functions. Those that are written with SaberRD's masked modeling language use a four-value digital logic. SaberRD also supports VHDL logic, which typically uses nine-value digital logic. There are a variety of models that convert between analog and digital, including comparators, switches, A to D converters, and D to A converters. This concludes this section of the SaberRD online training course. To download a free student version of SaberRD, go to the Synopsys website. To further your understanding of this material, go through the lab exercises found at the link listed in the description of this video. Thank you.